Clover Fresh Milk is the number one milk brand in SA. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. If you've just joined us, good timing because we're about to cook up one seriously amazing feast in this kitchen. Now surround yourself with fresh smells and textures as we take you on a real journey of adventure on this continent and bring it into your kitchen. Now mother and daughter duo Portia and Lumai are now invite you to experience their really colorful journey through Africa with the African Cookbook Feast. So get the pots, recipes and the clover butter oil ready on hand SMS the keyword Clover to 33650. SMSs are charged at one round fifty each and free SMSs do not apply. So first I want to ask you, how yes. good is your cooking? It's pretty good. I call myself the crooning contessa. Oh, amazing. Yeah, Love because that. musical theatre in my kitchen. So your favourite uh, <laughs> song to sing in the kitchen? Um, I'm, a, I'm a big one on Mariah and Beyonce, obviously. Oh. You've got to have the runs while you're, chopping the, while you're chopping the onions, you know? So you're going to give me a little bit of that <laughs> sweet, sweet memory. You see? Yeah. <laughs> I really wish I could sing that song. I love it. It's my favourite. OK, ladies, I cannot wait for this recipe. It's going to be absolutely delicious. Where do we get started? Absolutely. Well, um, I'm going to be making the batata balls. Yes. But in the meantime, I'm going to put the fish, because we're doing a fish emoji as well, so the yeah. fish needs to steam. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a... What exactly is a batata ball? Batata ball is sweet potato, mm batata. Mm batata. Mm -batata. Okay, so that's potato. Sweet potato, sweet potato. Yeah. And this is a little ball. Yeah. With sesame seeds. So okay. that kind of I spiced it oh, up. Now, if you go so to Malawi, good. you're not going to find these. Okay. That's my creation. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, I was going to ask which part of Africa this comes from. Everything in the recipe book is my inspiration. I've traveled to the country. Yeah. Kind of broke bread with the women, kind of found out where, what their interesting stuff was. Yeah. What do you cook at home? Because when you get to a country, you end up in a hotel. Yeah. So you've got to find out how you get to the village yeah. or wherever they do whatever they're doing, yeah. uh, um, where the home is. So that's where I kind of do my trek there. Then they say, oh, no, this is what we do, this is what we eat. That's where you find the real nugget of the recipe. Right? Yeah, mm. exactly. So, uh, like to, to eat the way the locals eat. eat I the think way that's the, locals the best but experience. But then I extract from there when I come home and I think, OK, how am I going to make this so that I can have a a recipe that, that's yeah. mine, but with an inspiration from Africa. Yeah. So that's what I do here. So what inspired this? Did the two of you just go mother and daughter travelling throughout the world just to find your favourite recipes and to create your favourite recipes for a book? Or did it just happen? No. no. So it happened organically. And I was actually saying to my mom, it's quite funny. Um, when I was young, I thought, OK, with all these trips that we took, which were really, like, rough in the bush, yeah. my, our parents want to kill us. They want to... <laughs> we were always somewhere stranded. Uh, we have many stories travelling through Mali, down the Niger River. We camped on the, the banks of the Niger River. And there was one night, there was a sandstorm. And yeah. you woke up in the morning covered in sand, stuck to every, like, part of your skin. And, and we looked outside and there's like there's nothing you can see nothing there's no one I thought no one knows we're here we could die out here like you know <laughs> and I'm like 12 years old you know I'm like could, there's no there's no civilization anywhere so our, our trips were were it was throughout my childhood it was um quite a, a yeah it was like, a natural habitat for you yeah it became <laughs> like adventures became like the normal holiday yeah. everyone else went to like How Disneyland exciting. um so it, it happened over many years it wasn't just yeah. one trip for recipes for the book yeah. It was like a life. Just a lifetime. Yeah. Wow, really? what an extraordinary, extraordinary childhood you must have had. Yeah. But now this is, the kitchen is, of course, Rufilwe's natural habitat. Oh, so oh, what oh. do you have for us to do? <clears throat> so this here is going to be the ayib dip, which is a lovely okay. fresh dip. It's, it's very simple, you're going to discover. It's a chunky cottage cheese. You've got Delish. yogurt here, a touch of a honey mm -hmm. into that bowl. Um, but I'm probably going to start you off with chopping with, I think, some of these spring onions. All righty. So it's this lovely um, yogurt-y dip. Uh, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here you go. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We'll use that one later for the fish. Okay, so onions yeah. in this pot, oil in this pot. Is this, is this enough, or do you want okay. some more? We're going to put, as yeah, soon as this stuff's okay. boiling, and just nice we're going to put some okay. fish, and I think there are shrimp in the fridge here okay. that we're going to put in that pot I as well. Say, I don't hold Amazing. Okay. Bay leaves and peppercorns. Okay. I'm going to remember that. Bay leaves and peppercorns, I'm going to try okay. not to get. <laughs> so the bay leaves and peppercorn, you can go ahead with that. All of them? No, no, no. Some. All about three or four, yeah. OK. Yeah. Great. That's a great job. Five. <laughs> Five. I like pepper. And then the bay leaves, I can't see here. 
the bay leaves. Uh, okay, well, we'll, 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 do, it, we'll do without the bay leaves. Yeah. Yeah. But let's from... actually get the shrimp, which is in here. Yeah. yeah. So the... It's a great, fridge. The, a great this, fridge. the one that you're making now, a lot of these dishes, as my mom said, is her inspiration. Yes. Right. Yeah. So um, she went somewhere, she probably tasted something she liked and thought, let me come home and make something similar. Mm -hmm. So the ayib is quite a nice fresh one. Mm -hmm. um, and then this Egyptian tamia is kind of like an Egyptian falafel. Oh, that's going to be What is yeah. tamia? So, so what the is... The beans, squash. I think it's the beans, yeah. It's mashed yeah. beans and you can use different types of beans. Doesn't have to be um, white beans, yeah. could be red speckled beans. And and then you've got leeks, you've got a whole lot of herbs. My mom loves herbs. Everything you can see, there's lots of coriander. It's yeah. her number one favorite. Everything smells amazing. So everything must have lots oh. of like fresh stuff in it. And then you're gonna make a little patty yep. and we're gonna shallow fry it. And that's yeah. what the tamia becomes. Oh, yeah. um, that Moroccan, Egyptian, Arabic kind of cuisine is just my favorite. All so of those little one. dips and lambs and oh, amazing. Yes. I absolutely love to eat that way. And also because it's always shared dishes, which I think is probably the best way to eat when everybody's sharing the same thing. The thought of being stuck with a meal all to yourself is daunting for me. I want a bit of everybody else. Also, you don't want to have to choose, right? Um, yeah. and, and miss Order out on envy. something else. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they always say, don't uh, let your food get cold while you're looking at someone else's plate. Yeah. It's the most African thing to uh, eat family style. Am so I here we've got the onions, yeah. shrimps, bay leaves. Amazing. Fish. And how do I put the fish in? Do I cut it up? No, no, you're just going to plate it on top of that. And what kind of fish is this? That's hake. Yes, These are okay. baby hakes. So, oh. you, so we put the onion in to recap the peppercorns, the bay leaves, the shrimp, all prawns, baby prawns, and then the hake. Perfect. All of that right. in a pot. All that Looks really good. Pot. So let it just steam. Yeah. We need to get well, a lid for that to steam. Okay. In the okay. meantime, can I give you this? Yes, what do you want me to do? You're gonna this? be you're gonna be crushing that, mashing it. Yeah. There you okay. go. There you go. How's your mashing going on that side? Mashing's going well. <laughs> Chopping is pre feeling pretty strong around here. Yeah, yes, it's looking good. 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 Chopping's really you need good. To go Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm doing a lot over here as well, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. I think put all that cottage cheese in. Fantastic. What's nice about um, actually a lot of African food, especially in, um, in Egypt, Egyptian food and um, yeah, Moroccan, is it's so influenced okay. by yeah. the Middle East. Like, That's right. Oh, actually, food in Africa, we always say it's so hard to say African food because you're talking about like so many different countries. Right. Yeah. whatever countries right. and with these amazing influences like on the east coast you get all these influences from um the indian the spice trade in mm -hmm. in kenya yeah. tanzania you, they eat like chapati there samosas they sure it's, do. All, it's like indian food you find there yet it's, they've made it their own yeah. and one of the so, things your yeah. mum was saying, sorry, Portia, what the Portia was saying, obviously, about having to go and find where the village is, where you find the food is, you find the local markets, yeah. um, is that everybody does eat d deeply local. Like yeah. the most, um, which of course is the way the organic movement is going now, totally. but we've been doing it for decades. And eat, what, and eat seasonal as well. That's right, quite right. Which is so much better for your digestive system and of course for the planet. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. All right. I was mentioning earlier that, um, you know, wherever I go, I actually got interested in African food in the States. Yeah. That's just, that's strange, coming from South Africa. Yeah. But because there are Ethiopian restaurants all over, wherever you go, yeah. everybody say to you, I've been to an Ethiopian restaurant. Yes. Why? And I've figured out, it's probably the only country in Africa that wasn't colonized. Yeah. So they felt proud enough to take their cuisine and transport it wow. to other countries. The rest of us just kept keeping our cuisine exactly. and adopted instead yeah. the cuisine from Europe, the cuisine from America, the yeah. cuisine from Mexico, and we just forgot about our own cuisine. Right. Yeah. We forgot about our own food, which is so precious, which is so lovely. What a yeah. very special, very important message. There's actually this Ethiopian restaurant in Cape Town, which is one of my favorites. They just serve you like this big, Bread, I suppose, well, yes. like a kind of bread. Yeah. And then yeah, just yeah. all of these little plates with different yes. incredibly tasteful, herbful plates. Again, oh. that family style eating that you love yes. so much. Yes, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. I'm ready for my next challenge. I've done okay. my finance. I'm and ready for my radio. So 
<laughs> Thank it you. was so quick. All oh, right, so you, just now you're going to help me make um, patties out of the... Okay, fantastic. I'm going to have you make little balls out of these. Okay, well, we're going to make the balls. Let's just recap what we have here, ladies. Okay. We've got the sweet potato, a little bit of sugar, and what was the other spice you put um, in? I put in some cinnamon and some nutmeg. Okay, that's going to okay. be absolutely amazing. And then during the ad break, we're going to be making some little balls with this. In here, we have our onions, bay leaf, shrimp, and, of course, our baby hakes. And that's just steaming. I'll get you a lid for that right. now. Then over here, oh, my favourite. What is this? Like a... It's like cottage cheese a, yogurt yeah. and the, the ayub. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, the, the dip. And it's called yeah. ayub. 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 Yeah. Ayyub. Where's it from? Egyptian. 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 Oh, Egyptian. stunning. I was actually in Egypt this time last year, oh, obviously oh, wow. eating my way through Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what is in that one again? And this is the tamia, which is uh, white beans, leeks, coriander, a spring those, onion. And those are the ones wow. we're going to shallow fry. Stunning. Yeah. Oh, there's so much happening in this kitchen today. <laughs> I really hope that you are keeping up and being inspired to cook some of these amazing African dishes yourself at home. And if these, de if these delicious finger foods inspired you, and if you would like to learn more, you could stand the chance to win one of two copies of the African Cookbook. And to do so, SMS the keyword book to 33650. SMSs are one round 50 each and free SMSs do not apply. T's and C's can be found on our website. Here's a quick recap in case you wanted to see how we made some of these incredible dishes one more time. With love by Clover. Now, this is legitimately something that I do often. Great cheese, because cheese is probably my favourite thing in the world. Now, don't go away, because after the break, we get into a really delicious fish emojo recipe. Don't miss out. We're going to finish up this delicious dish. Clover Fresh Milk is the number one milk brand in SA. Made with love by Clover.